So we've given you a bow tier list, we've given you a sword tier list, we've given you pets tier list, we've even given you an armor set tier list, and if you ignore the recent view counts, you guys still want more. So we've thought long and hard about what else could be made into a tier list, and there was really only one logical conclusion. We had to make a tier list of literally everything in the game. Now obviously we can't just make a video where we rank every little intricate thing because A, we'd be here for hours, and B, we already ranked the interesting stuff in other videos, so what we're actually gonna do is rank everything that makes up Hypixel Skyblock, the features, the mechanics, the community, that sort of stuff. And before you ask, isn't this just an excuse to complain about a bunch of stuff? Yes, it, th it is, that, that's actually what this is. Let's start with skills, and by skills I mean each individual skill, because in my opinion, it should be a crime to include something as awful and boring as foraging with something as cool and intricate as mining. Speaking of mining, that sounds like a good place to start. Mining is by far the most complicated and well-developed skill in the game, largely because it took almost the same amount of time as it takes to create a full human baby to create the Crystal Hollows and Dwarven Mines. I've never really understood why mining levels and the heart of the mountain have had totally separate progression systems, and the very limited variety of commissions can get really boring, but I think the sheer effort that went into making the Crystal Hollows and how cool it is makes the mining skill deserving of A tier. Fishing is a relatively average skill, all things considered, that wouldn't actually be that bad if its progression didn't abruptly end at fishing level 30, with seemingly no regard nor content for the 20 levels after it. This can largely be forgiven though, as fishing has remained mostly unchanged since its release as a proper skill, literally as the first ever Skyblock update, and the next upcoming fishing update will hopefully resolve the issue of the lack of things to do. I'm going to put this in B tier for now and cross my fingers that the fishing update won't disappoint. Farming is boring. It's just boring. I can't say anything other than boring. The farming overhaul update that was supposed to make farming interesting changed absolutely nothing about farming itself, and just made it faster to build the farm in order to do the boring thing. Farming belongs in D tier as D is short for the boring. Taming, rune crafting, and carpentry are all useless, and I don't think anyone's ever cared about them, but they're all leveled up passively, so there is nothing too offensive about them so they can all sit comfortably in the C tier. Actually, I realized that taming isn't that bad of a skill because it helps you level up pets faster. These two are completely useless, but this one has use, uh, taming has use, so I'm gonna put it in B instead of C. Foraging is the worst skill in the game. I actually think it might just be the worst thing in the game, like, in general. So much so that it doesn't deserve a spot on the tier list and actually has its own special place reserved in the deepest pit of hell as a form of torture. I mean this 100% sincerely. If you enjoy foraging, you actually need to go outside. You don't even need to touch grass. I'm not asking much. Just, just, just see the sun for a change. Foraging isn't even going on the tier list. Fuck you. If you've ever wanted to see what giving up looks like, look no further than enchanting. This skill was so bad before that they literally added a series of mobile games in that you do instead of enchanting to act as an artificial time gate for progress and then let you pick your own enchants. I suppose it's better than the old system, but it's so uncreative that I struggled putting it anywhere higher than C tier. Alchemy is also just like enchanting but expensive and time-consuming, so that gets a D from me. Last but not least is combat, and I'm not gonna rank combat because you don't own me. I'm instead gonna rank what makes up combat, starting with swords. Swords are really hard to go wrong with, especially given that in Minecraft 1.8, it's really hard to go wrong with the very limited tools you have at your disposal. My only complaint is how quickly the sword progression outside of dungeons falls off, and for that reason, I'll put swords in A tier. Bows are like swords, but with range, except it's possible to do a lot more interesting things with a bow than a sword. Skyblock seems like it has a bow with every single special ability you could really imagine a bow having, and the new custom arrows add an extra layer of depth too. 
even if they do seem a bit like duct tape edition. Aside from a couple of balancing issues here and there, bows are deserving fully of an S ranking and if you disagree with me, then you can fetch your complaints directly to my fetch machine which is set up directly above my paper shredder. Mage weapons have the most potential out of everything in the game, and yet I feel like they are full of missed potential. All of the current mage weapons in the game are just a huge area of effect explosions and have jumped in and out of the meta way more than it should. There is also no way to level up or upgrade mage weapons damage other than leveling up your combat skill or your enchanting skill, which is even more ironic considering the fact that there are no regular enchantments that directly affect magic weapons, and there is also no real way to level up enchanting through the use of magic weapons for all the potential they have, I say they belong in the B tier, despite all their glaring flaws. Do slayers count as combat? I say yeah, they do. Slayers have existed in the game for a very long time, and the newer slayer bosses have definitely been a step up from the original 12 and have received the most patches and updates out of any feature in the game. You'd think all these patches would make slayers a very polished part of the game, but you'd be totally wrong, as nothing can change Slayer's score problem of being quite literally the exact same thing with no variation one thousands of times in a row. Individually, I'd say this Van Patmaster and Tarantula Broadfather are both D tier bosses, as they're outdated and boring. Revenant Horror can squeeze into B tier, because its fifth tier at least makes it worth doing assuming you have nothing better to be doing, and the Voided Gloom Seraph being a very well designed boss in almost all aspects makes it deserving of an A tier. It'd be S if the progression wasn't so slow and limiting, but you wouldn't still be playing the game if it wasn't for the unreasonably long grinds, so that might be asking too much. The last part of combat is bosses, and not counting dungeons, I think Skyblock's main bosses are far from perfect largely because they were designed at a time when the game was much simpler. I think every pre-dungeon player loves the dragon fights or at least has some memories of them, as they were always a memorable and a fun surprise when you first entered the dragon's nest and saw the message. Like everything, the magic doesn't withstand one hundreds of repetitive battles and millions of lost coins to gambling away summoning eyes, but the concept is neat and with a bit of balancing on the drops to bring them more in line with modern skyblock, I'd say dragons would be a solid B tier. However, the OST for the dragon fight is pretty cool, and for that reason, I'm actually giving it an A. The unnamed magma boss, however, has not stood the test of time so well. I think the only notable thing to come out of the magma boss was that one time Dio video where he flexes having 21 million coins and the skyblock add-ons mod that everyone used for the timer. Last I checked the boss was actually bought it anyway, and would never drop the ember rod no matter what, and you can't help but feel bad for the poor guy. It seems the next update is a revamp of the nether island though, so I hope he gets some love and attention there. For now, definite D tier. Now that that's out of the way, let's rate you, or more accurately, the community. If you're subscribed to me, then that immediately puts you in S tier, but let's say that you hypothetically aren't subscribed to me, which is impossible, YouTube says 100% of my viewers are subscribed, and you didn't just subscribe to fix this problem, then that makes you a part of the wider Skyblock community. And I hate the wider Skyblock community. Let's start with the worst offender, the forums. I think every minute you spend on the forums, your lifespan decreases by at least 3 days and there's just no way you're gonna get that back. Please avoid the forums at all cost. F tier. Another of the worst parts of the community is the subreddit. I actually think we should ban r slash hypixel skyblock because it is offensive to people with a sense of humor. It is a healthier alternative to the forums though, so at least it's like D tier and not F. Skyblock YouTubers exist, and you either like them or you don't, but you're watching me so hey, I guess I can't be that bad. The only Skyblock YouTuber worthy of going on the tier list is the polished guy with a nice voice who solved the foraging problem, immediate S tier for him. The last part of the community I wanna mention is the modding community. This community is huge and improves the experience of thousands of people playing the game, despite the fact that there are still people willing to use Bad Lion. Ew. 
I think the modding community deserves an A rank because there are a few bad apples out there that try to scam people with mods. Not cool. Another major feature I haven't really touched on is coins, Bazaar and the Auction House. I like the idea of coins. It's like one centralized currency that you can use to convert any of one item into any of another item through trading or other means. And their value is always gonna be backed up through the things you can spend them on, like dungeon chests. This does, of course, cause issues with progression skips with the auction house, and for that reason alone, I think the auction house deserves a B rank, given the cost that its convenience brings to the game. What I like more though is the bazaar. Grinding thousands of raw materials is really time consuming, and having an in-game Bloomberg terminal that lets you easily buy raw materials from other players is a great idea and fills in for some of the worst designed grinds of the game. Easy S tier for the bazaar, and I'll meet in the middle with coins and go A tier. What if you were allergic to the auction house though and wanted to do the Skylock equivalent of going vegan? Introducing Iron Man mode. Iron Man mode forces you to do every single boring part of Skyblock and is really good if you genuinely have nothing better to be doing with your time. However, over time, I have started to hate Iron Man less and less, as I feel the game is slowly getting towards a better state where playing Iron Man is almost shaping up to be the way you're supposed to play. It's still not great though, some things are nearly impossible to reasonably grind for. I see potential in Iron Man mode, but the way the game is now, I struggle to give it anything more than a C rating. If I were feeling generous, I'd give it a B, but I'm not feeling generous. Dungeons Dungeons was the pipe dream that was supposed to be the way forward for Skyblock, but it really wasn't. Not only was it plagued by delay after delay, but the whole of Dungeons content had to be cut short because it was taking too long to develop and the balancing was just completely out of whack. I saw great potential in dungeons, but now it's just kind of the part of the game that everyone either loves or vows never to touch after finishing floor 7. As with everything in this game, its biggest letdown is its repetition, which can't really be avoided. But you know there's a problem when your player base creates mods that solve puzzles for them because everything was just too long and boring to do themselves after the 600th time. Dungeons would be legitimately perfect if every floor only had to be completed 3 or 4 times, but that isn't the case. The reward milestones do not stop until completing each floor 1000 times, which is way more times than any human being should really be doing anything, and the reward for doing that is an item that lets them do the exact same thing more than 1000 times, slightly faster. I find it hard to believe that after running a dungeon 1000 times, there's gonna be anything the player hasn't seen or experienced yet. And that's not to mention ludicrous drop rates on items like Necron's handles and giant swords. Master mode doesn't count either. There is nothing new in master mode, it is just the exact same thing but with more difficult stats and a slightly changed boss fight. I think there is great potential in the dungeon's format. But after the objective failure that the Catacombs was, I don't think we'll be seeing any more dungeons for a very, very long time, if ever. C tier. How do you find our tier list? Are you currently coping and seething? If so, leave a comment about it. There's obviously more things I haven't covered in this video, but I'd be happy to make a part 2 covering everything else if this video gets, I don't know, 100, 150k views, I don't know. Yep. That's about it. See ya. Have a nice day.